Luke chapter number 18, verse number 1. If you're there, say amen, family. It said, then he, somebody say Jesus. He spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. The Amplified Version said also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, give up. Listen, that we should always pray. When we pray, we won't turn coward, faint, lose heart, nor give up. You know, I taught you, we've been teaching on prayer. I taught you what is prayer. I taught you why we should pray. Now today we're going to talk about how to pray. And my, and my title of the day is how to pray correctly and effectively. How to pray what? Correctly and effectively. See, because you can pray. A lot of us pray, but we, we don't have results. How many of y'all want to be results-oriented? Some people, they just do something. Just like, you know, you busy in a rocking chair, but you ain't going nowhere. Man, I want to go somewhere. A lot of people, geez, that's, that's what God told the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number one. He said, how long are you going to go around this mountain? You've been going around it for 40 years. So I'm going to teach you. You won't have no excuse over the next three weeks. I'm going to teach you how to pray correctly and effectively. But I'm going to lay the foundation. Because a lot of people are praying, but they're not getting answers. Every time you pray, you're supposed to get an answer. Amen. Every time you pray. The Word of God taught us, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4, uh, 14 through 16, that we should come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace for every need. The Bible says Jesus forever lived to make intercession on our behalf, Hebrews 7, 25. If God is listening to us, why are we not getting answers? See, why are we not getting answers? See, sometimes you tell your spouse, you tell your kid, are you listening to me? Do you hear what I say? Now, I'm, a bit, I'm, I'm big since I've been in Georgia on recycling. I have told my family for the last four years, that is the recycling container. I didn't raise my voice now, and they go right over there and throw paste and cup. Who did this? I go off in there, and I'm just okay. <laughs> See, they hear me, but they're not listening. Family, is anything wrong with God here? See, why are we not getting answers then? I'm going to teach you how to pray correctly and effectively. Now, watch this. We're going to two scriptures. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter. Let me lay the foundation. Go to 2 Peter chapter number 1. Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter number 1. And then we're going to go to Galatians chapter number 4. Amen. I'm going to teach you when you finish, when I finish with this over the next couple of weeks, you're going to know how to pray correctly and effectively. Every time you pray, something's going to happen. Amen. Every time you pray, something's going to happen. Amen. You're a child of God. Every time my children say something to me, I hear them. I don't ignore them. God ain't ignoring you. Amen. But you have to know. That's why God said, Terry, you got to do everything what? Decently and in what? Order. God is a God of order. You have to do things decently and you have to do it in order. See, we, we have a, a prayer mentality like, like I, I grew up in the hood. We just haul off and, and pray. We just haul off and do something. No, God ain't no hall of God. Amen. You have to do everything decently in order. God is a planner. He started talking about Jesus in Genesis. Amen. He showed up in Matthew. Amen. Thousands of years later, God is a purpose-driven God. We're a purpose-driven people. So in 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 12, <clears throat> if you're there, say amen. He said, for this reason, I would not be negligent to remind you how often, family? Always. I remind you how often? Always of these things, though you know and I establish in the present truth. Yes, I think it's right. As long as, I, as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you. I'm going to stir you up now. Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the gift that's in you. See, I'm going to remind you of some things. Go to Galatians chapter number 4. He said, I think it's right as long as I'm in this tent, this physical body, to stir you up by reminding you. Galatians chapter number 4, verse number 19. Galatians 4, 19. Mm -hmm. 
how to pray correctly and effectively. Amen. If you're there, say amen. Amen. And Galatians 4 and 19 said, My little children, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is what? Formed in you. He said, I'm going to keep labor and birth pain. See, if you had a baby, you know what that's like to be in labor. You ready for that joker to come. Amen. So he said, my little children for whom I labor and birth pains again until Christ is formed in you. A lot of us been praying for years, but we don't see any result. So that makes God, that, that makes, that makes like, hey, we're just, just, just going through a routine, a ritual. No, every time you pray, something should happen. Go to, uh, go to uh, 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 John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16. John chapter number what? 16. Go to John chapter number 16. In verse 23, John 16, 23. John 16, 23. And let's get down. Y'all ready to get down? Let's get down in the word. Amen. John 16, 23. Y'all ready? He said, in that day, we in that day. In that day, Jesus saying, you should ask me what? Nothing. Watch it. In that day, you should ask me what? Nothing. Most assuredly, oh, show sure enough, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he going to do what, family? See that? That's Jesus talking. Is he lying? Look at verse 24. He said, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will what? Receive, that your joy may be full. That's prayer. That's prayer. Go to Luke chapter number 11. Luke chapter number 11. I'm about to take off. Luke chapter number 11. See, I'm looking, we understand, God already told us he cannot lie, so when I pray, what's the problem? Where's the manifestation? Where's the result? What's up, God? Do you hear me? See, what's, what's the problem? I've been praying for this thing for years. What's the problem, God? Amen. Luke chapter number 11, look at verse number 9. If you're there, say amen. So I say to you, ask and it would be what, family? Given to you. Seek and you will what? And it would, uh, uh, seek and you will find. Knock and it would be open to you. For everyone who asks does what? Now look at me. Don't nobody raise their hand. How many times you ask for something you ain't received? What's the problem? See? He said, you ask, you should receive. He said, ask for everyone who asks receive, and he who seeks find. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Go to John chapter number 15. John chapter number 15. I want to, when I pray, I want to see results. You're going to get results now. If you be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. If you be a doer of the word and not just a hearer, you're going to get results. One of the things, one of my assignments to the body of Christ is God cannot lie. That's one of my assignments. If God cannot lie, then it's something I must be doing wrong. Or it's something that you could be doing right. You just need to do right long enough. Amen. Watch this here, family. In John chapter number 15, if you're there, say amen. Now, now watch this here. Now watch this here. Now everybody look at me. Let me, t let me teach you the, the, the foundation, the correct way to pray, and uh, to, to how to pray correctly and effectively. The most important thing to pray is you got to have a, a foundation in the word. You have to have a foundation in the what? Word. If you don't have a foundation in the word, when the storms come, you're not going to be able to survive. Now, I want, we better pick it up in John 15, verse number 1, and then we're going to read it, and then... We're going we gonna to move on to some other things. But I want for you to see how important it is for you to have a foundation in the Word. Because a lot of people, they are praying, but they don't have a foundation in the Word, so they don't get results. And I'm going to show you the reason why. So in John 15, 1, if you're there, say amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine. I am the what? True vine. And my father is the vine dresser. My father is the farmer. 
every branch, he's talking about us, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear what? More fruit. God wants for you to increase, increase. God is all about increase. Verse number three, he said, you are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Abide, that word right there, that word abide means to live in, to stay joined to, to remain, to dwell. He said, it, that word abide means to live in me. He's saying, you got to live in me. You have to live in me, and the word have to live in you. See, I want you to catch that. This one of the keys to being, having, praying correctly and effectively. He said, you got to abide in me. A lot of us are praying for things, but we're not abiding in God. We're not remaining in him. We're not staying joined to him. See, we're not living in him. He said, watch this here. Abide, live in me, stay joined to me, remain in me, dwell, live in me, and I in you. He's talking about the word. Watch it here. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Unless you abide, live in me, stay joined, remain, dwell in me. I am the vine. He said, don't get it twisted. I am the what? Vine. And you are the branches. He who abides in me, live in me, stay joined, remain in me. And I in him bears what, family? Much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Now, he said all that. Watch this. Then he moved to verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, remain in me, live in me, stay joined to me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gathered them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. See, God, I'm going to show you how to pray. God gave me a different twist to it. So I want for you to see it, but it's going to come from the Word. Watch this here. He said, if you do verse 1 through 6, then you ought to be able to do verse 7. If you abide, remain in me, live in me, stay joined in me, dwell in me, and my words remain in you, stay joined to you, live in you, you will ask what you what? You will ask what you desire, ask what you want, and it shall be. Now, you see why a lot of folks ain't receiving? You see why a lot of folks ain't, ain't they pray off not effectively? They're not staying joined to him. They're not remaining in him. They're not staying connected to him. Now, watch this here. Come here, Bernard. Come here. Come here, Bernard. Come here. Oh, uh, come on, Bernard. Come here. Come here. Come here one sec. Now, watch this here. Bernard is Jesus. Who's Bernard? He's Jesus. So the Bible tells me, me, to stay connected to him, to stay joined to him, to stay remain with him, to dwell with him. Right? Take off walking, Bernard. I don't care where you, you ain't leaving me. The death, he said, I don't care where he go, I'm doing what, family? I'm going with him. He said, stay joined to him. He said, if I let him go, I'm going to whip him. And I don't care how I pray, it's going to come to what, family? Nothing. Without me, you can do, I'm going to stay. See, that's what we do. We're praying, but we ain't staying hooked to him. And I'm going to show you why. Wherever Jesus go, guess where I'm going? I'm going. Amen. See, that's what if you read in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter number 1, Elijah and Elijah Elijah tried to get Elijah to leave him. He said, the devil is alive. Wherever you go, I'm going. Let me tell you something, family. He said, here's the key to successful prayer. You better stay hooked up with me. You better remain with me. You better stay joined to me. See, we pray and say, God, what's the problem? You ain't hooked up. You ain't staying joined. You ain't remaining. You ain't dwelling with me. See, this is the key right here. Wherever he go, I'm going to be right there with him. Because I know I can't do it without him. See, that's why I go back to verse number five. We look at verse number five. He said, I am, the, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides, live in me, stay joined, remain, dwell in me. And I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do. You can, a lot of us, we skip right down to verse seven. See? 
but you can't have verse 7 until you have verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. See, you got to stay hooked up. And if you stay hooked up, you're going to pray correctly, and your prayer is going to come to pay. See, your prayer is going to come to pay. Now, watch this here. Uh, Matthew chapter number 13. Y'all okay? Amen. See, you got to stay hooked up, baby. See, a lot of us, we hit and miss. Most of us pray when, when hard times fall on us. Your prayer life should never change. Your prayer life should never change. I don't care what you're going through. In good times or hard times, your prayer life should be the same. It should never change. When you're having a hard time, you're going into your prayer closet, spending time with Jesus. When you're having good time, you going into your prayer closet. Amen. How many people y'all know? Right now, don't raise your hand. You know when they're going through a hard time. Say amen. You, oh, Lord, hope. I see you trying to run from me. See, you know when people, they're going to call everybody, they're going to text everybody. You should go through something and don't nobody know but key people who are in agreement with you. The whole church should know what you're going through. Amen. See, family, you should go through. See, that's why we, we say this here, but I'm, I'm going to paraphrase that You should never let the, the enemy see you sweat. You'll never see me sweat, baby. Amen. I'm not going to give you an ammunition. You already defeated. Now I'm going to show. He said, if you don't stay joined up, he said, that's why people are not getting their prayers answered. They're not staying connected. They're not dwelling in me. They're not remaining in me. they praying. See, he said, we delight ourselves in the Lord. He'll give us the desires of our heart. Now watch this here, family. Matthew chapter 13. Watch this here. God gave me this twist. He said, mm, I said, mm, that's good, Holy Spirit. He said, I know it. I know it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm what? Good. He's what? Good. Matthew chapter number what? 13. Let's pick it up in verse number 10. Somebody going to get this today. Somebody going to get this today. You ready streaming live? Come on, let's get this today. Matthew chapter number 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries. The that word mystery means secret of hidden truths of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has been, but to them it has not been given. It's been given to us, family. For whoever has to him more will be given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in power, because seeing they do not see. Hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah fulfilled, which says, Hearing, you would hear and should not understand. Seeing, you should see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes, have, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they shall understand with their hearts and turn so that I shall heal them. But bless are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets, righteous men, desire to see what you see and do not see it, and to hear what you hear and do not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Now, here's the key, family. We're going to read this out of Matthew 13. We're going to read out of Mark chapter 4. We're going to read out of Luke chapter 8. And every last one, we're going to get some nuggets. He said, this is why people are praying and their prayers are not effectively right here in this scripture right here. Y'all ready? Watch this here. Verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, that's what you're listening to right now. You're hearing the words of the kingdom. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does, and does not understand it, what did Jesus say? See, you got to put the Bible together. What did, Jesus, what did the word says in, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all your getting, get a what? An understand. You're here today to get an understanding. If you hear me and don't understand, it won't do you no good. See, the first thing is you got to hear. Because faith come by and hearing by the word of God. Then the second thing, you must understand. Understand it thou? What uh, Peter, what uh, 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 Philip told the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch, 
understanding what thou readest? A lot of us, we don't understand what we read. The only revelation you can walk in is what you understand. That's why I'm laying a foundation for you. Because when you get an understanding, you can walk in it. You can make a choice to walk in it. See, that's why he says, watch this, verse number 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, every week you come here, you're hearing the word of the kingdom. Watch this here. And does not understand it, the wicked one, Satan, comes and snatch away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. See, you're going to be one of these four grounds right now. When you hear and don't understand, Satan's going to snatch it from you. But when you understand something, he can't take it from you. That's number two. Number one is the wayside. Number two is the stony place. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. He has no what? He has no root in himself, but endures only for what? See, he prays. See, anytime you pray, look at me, family. When you pray, you make your request to God. God hears you. He dispatched the angels. But also Satan is dispatched to get you off that word. And if you don't have no root, see, that's why he said, he said, don't be weary in well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. See, you're going to reap if you don't quit. You're going to reap if you don't give up. You're going to reap if you stay joined up, if you stay connected. See, you're going to reap. See, that's what prayers are. You got to stay connected. You got to have some word in you. Amen. Now watch what he's saying here. Verse number 21. Yet they have no root in himself. See, they don't have no foundation of the word in them. But endures only for a while. As soon as they pray, they get all joy. They got joy. Oh, God, thank you. You heard me. Pray God said, pray the Lord. But you got to go through this process. Amen. Watch this here. They endures only for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arise because of the because of the prayer you just made. Anytime you arise, what's going to happen? Tribulation and persecution are going to arise because of the word you just asked for God for, the request you just made. Here it comes. I'm telling you, God cannot lie. When you pray some and believe in some, as soon as you say, God, I thank you that I have a great marriage. My husband is the bum. He's the diggity diggity dot com. He's all that. <laughs> Guess what that joke going to do? That joke going to start acting a fool. I can say the wife too. Why? Because what's going to happen? The, the tribulation and persecution going to become because of the word. As soon as you say, I got the best kids in the world. God, I thank you for my kids. They're great. They're making, they honor old students. They got great attitude. Here come, here come tribulation. Here come persecution. It's coming for the word's sake, baby. And if you don't have no root, what's root? You start saying what they're doing. You're a terrible child. You're always getting in trouble. You're just like your dad. You, just, you don't have no root. You should stand up and say, Father, I thank you. I got the best kids in the world. Every college in the universe trying to get to them. Father, I thank you. They respect their parents. Father, I think they love you. To, see, you, I don't care what they're doing. See, you say what the word says. You ain't coming off your prayer. You ain't coming off your confession. You ain't moved by what you see. You move by what you believe, and you believe the word. See, that's what I'm saying. You don't have no root. That's why you don't know, that's why you don't know how to pray correctly and effectively, because either you a wayside or your stone. He said tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, and immediately he stumbled. Look at verse 22. Now he received among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world. A lot of y'all, see, I, I watch people. The cares of this world. you more concerned about the cares of this world. And Jesus said, why are you worried about stuff? Homework. Go home and read Matthew chapter number six. He said that he's in the world worried about stuff. What they gonna eat? 
what they going to drink, what they going to wear, where they going to live, where they going to work. He said, that's what they He said, don't worry about that. He said, you seek the kingdom. He said, you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God's way of doing things and being right, and everything them heathens seeking out, it's going to be added to you. See, that's why, see, when you learn how to pray, he said, quit seeking that stuff. Come out to me. Seek me, the care of this world. See, we worried about, we're going to have to put some gas in our car. What are we going to eat? Where are we going to live? Am I going to be able to get a job? The care of this world. What am I going to do? A lot of y'all woke up this morning stressed out. What you going to wear to church? And I told you, hit the time, baby, we ain't watching you that close. Come in here with a big sheep wrap around you. Amen. And develop a new style. You need to come get this word. Amen. The care of this world. I, my hair, I ain't going to church like that. Baby, put a big old hat on. See, the care of this world. And you want to know why your prayers are not effect. You're more concerned about the, you just like the world. You got a worldly mindset. Amen. See, the care of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. You deceived. The, the Bible said it chokes the word. It chokes your prayer life. It ch- so you know what choke is? Choke mean choke mean that I'm on I'm on uh, cause you to uh, to cut off your oxygen. See, that's one of the worst way to die is somebody choke you. See, it cut off your oxygen. Amen. See, he said he said the deceitfulness of richness. Carols of the world, it chokes your prayer life. Amen. Because here come the answer. But here also come persecution. Here come tribulation. Amen. The carols of this world. Amen. The deceitfulness of riches. It's choking you, baby. Now watch this. Let's keep reading. And become un what? What was it said? The deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes what? Your prayers become unfruitful. But he received on good ground. Somebody say good ground. It is he who hear and understands it. And who and indeed bear fruits and produce some a hundred, some six, some thirtyfold. He said, He who hears and understands. He said, I understand. I understand the persecution is supposed to come. I understand that tribulation is supposed to come. I understand that based on what I'm believing God for. All this stuff's supposed to happen. Bring it on, devil. I ain't coming off what God told me. Mark chapter number four. I'm ready now. Mark chapter number four, verse number 14. See? Because he said, he said, Terry, the reason they're not praying correctly and effectively, they don't have no root. They don't understand that persecution is supposed to arise for the word's sake. All hell supposed to break loose. When all hell breaks loose, that's a sign that things are working. Look at your neighbor and say, it's working. Amen. Anybody catching hell up in here? Guess what? It's working. Now, if you catching hell, you ain't believing for something, that's your fault. That's your problem. You just, I'm just catching hell. What you believe in God for? Nothing. Then you catch, go ahead, go through your catch hell. <laughs> See, if I'm catching hell, I want to at least believe in God for something. I at least want to be able to say what Psalms 30, verse 5 said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the... Somebody say good morning. Good morning. Somebody, they just catch hell. What you, what you getting hell for? Nothing. It's just hard out here. It's hard on the believer, too. But the believer has a promise. Mark chapter number 4, verse number 14, if you're there, say amen. The sower sows the word. That's prayer. When you pray, you're sowing the word. You're giving God's word back to him. And the Bible said, when you give God's word back to him, his word should not come back void. It shall, it must, it will accomplish what he set it out to do. Amen. The sower, you the sower. You the sower. Every time you pray, you sowing the word. The Bible says the sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear Satan comes, what? He comes, what? 
soon as you pray about your kids, soon as you pray about your marriage, soon as you pray about your job, Satan comes, what? Hey, let me tell you something. Soon as you leave out here, somebody's going to try to steal that word from you. Somebody in the same car with you. You just look at them and say, pray, amen, in the same car with you. They're going to say something. You're going to be like, man, did this? See? Get right in the car with you. And you just look at them. Don't let, see, don't you let them steal the word. I'm telling you, it works with like clockwork. I'm a preacher. It works like clockwork. Have a good time and study. All of a sudden, get a call. Then I said, hold on a second. Father, I thank you. I receive that word. I'm holding on to it. Okay, what's up? I'm telling you, I don't care what, you can have one, the breath prayer life, get up, and all hell break loose in the house. You can have a good prayer life and everything, go, as soon as you walk in your workplace, all hell break loose. They trying to steal the, the Bible says he's going to come immediately. Why? To steal the word from you. So the word don't produce. Watch this here. Look what it said. And these are the ones on the wayside when they hear the word of song. When they hear Satan comes immediately, and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. These likewise are the ones sown on stone the ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive with gladness. But they have no root in themselves. They endure only for a what? For a time. Afterward, when tribulation, persecution arise for the... Family, if you believe in some, if you got a prayer life, persecution come for the rest, word's sake. Persecuting right for the works that immediately they stumble. Now, these are the ones who sown on thorns. They are the ones who hear the words, the carols of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things. Most people, most church people care about things. Jesus, don't worry about things. God made all things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things should be added unto you. Amen. I was, my wife and I was watching the news yesterday. This guy had been on a plane. He said, I've been in these clothes for 48 hours. He said, this is terrible. There's some folks in other countries been in clothes for six months, man. Come on. You don't know how blessed we got it over here in America. I told my wife, I've been in some of my clothes for the last two or three days. She said, I know I watched them. <laughs> see, tell me, we, you don't know how, you, see, we get, I'm going to teach, one of the prayers we're going to teach about is the prayer of Thanksgiving. We don't know how thankful we are. We take too many things for granted. We think everybody got running water, got electricity, got cell phone, got hospital, got doctors, got grocery stores, got automobiles. Yes, Amen. Got central air and heat. See, that's why he said, see, we, we, we take too many things for granted. Amen. It's some folks still walking everywhere they go. Amen. See, watch this here, family. Verse 17, they have no root in themselves. They endure for a time. After when tribulation and persecution arrive for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, these are the ones that's on the thorn. They are the ones who hear the word, the carols of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. The other thing, enter in and choke the word, their prayer life, and it becomes what? Unfruitful. Now, these are the ones that's sold on good ground. They hear, accept it, and bear fruit. 36 to 100 fold. Last one. Luke chapter number 8. See? You got to have a you got to have a foundation in the word to have a good prayer life. And a lot of us we don't study. That's why Paul said in 2 Timothy 2:15. He says, "Study to show yourself approved unto God, being a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth." See? Rightly divine. See, that's one of the things that I'm going to do for you. I bought some of my, my books that taught me how to pray that I'm going to give to you. See, I have to, you have to learn this stuff. You have to learn things. See, one of the things, why tell you turn? Okay, okay, one second. We'll come right back to Luke. But one second, let's go to, where are we going? We in Luke. Just look at verse 11. We in Luke. But go to chapter 11, then we come back to verse, uh, Luke 8. Go to Luke chapter 11, verse number 1. We come back to verse number 1. You got to learn this stuff. Somebody had to teach you this. See, y'all ready? In Luke chapter number 1, 
Verse number one, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, Jesus, when he ceased, that one of the disciples said to him, Lord, do what? Do what? As John also did what? So it's okay. That's what Pastor Terry is doing right now. So God, when I teach, God said, Terry, the same way I taught you and other people taught you, go teach the people. So one of the things that Pastor Terry did what God taught me, he said, Terry, you got to seek me. See, you have to be a reader. See, in one of the things, I got one, two, three, four of the books, just four of them. I got a lot, I got thousands of books. See, leaders are readers. And I don't read because I like it. I read because I want to be successful. Now, I like eating. <laughs> but I work out so I can eat. But I read because I know these people got 50, 60, 70 years a successful ministry, and I want what they got. So what I did, my wife can tell you, I was a baby Christian, and I started buying books and tapes and CDs. Back then, it was they had them big old things, them DV, what them big VHS. It, old school people know about real to real. What my old school people at? Them big old. <laughs> Watch this here, family. So I got some of my books out. One of them is Kenny Copeland's book, Prayer, Your Foundation for Success. She had them on the screen up there. She should. Uh, uh, prayer, Your Foundation. This is one of them. I read these books and get nuggets out of them. When I pray, Holy Spirit, give me the nuggets. Another one is Prayer That Avails, Avails for Men, written by Copeland Word Ministry. See, I read these books. They taught me how to pray. See, they gave me a foundation in the Word. Another one is Prayer That Prevails written by Cliff Richardson and Lloyd Hinderbrain. See, the cover's off of this family. I only have the cover to show you how to read these books. And then another one is by my father in the faith, Apostle Price, uh, Answer Prayer, Guaranteed. I read these books. That's how you learn. How somebody have to teach you. And that's what I'm doing. Like right now, I just gave you just four of my books. You don't have to get these, but you need to get somebody book on prayer who's going to teach you how to pray. If not, you're going to go around the same mountain for all the rest of your life. And knowing the God, how come this stuff ain't manifest in my life? How come it's not real in my life? How come it's not showing up in my life? You got to go out to God. See, that's why he said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Him that come to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then he said the same thing in Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 13, you got to seek me diligently. When you seek me diligently, you will find me. Say the same thing in Proverbs 8, 17. You got to be a diligently seeker, family. This is just four of my books. I probably got 10 other books on prayer. Why? I know prayer is my connection to God. I know it's divinity talking to humanity. And my every step is ordered by God because I'm listening to him because I have a prayer life. I'm intimate. I have a relationship with him. See, you got to have some word in you. See, Jesus, see, I'm going to tell you, I'm, we're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about uh, Paul. We're going to talk about Elijah. All those men who prayed, every prayer they prayed got answered. Why? Because they had word in them. We're trying to get prayers answered. We don't have no word. Or we do have word. We don't have no root. Or we deceivingness of riches, or carols of this world. See, or some of the other things. Luke chapter number 8. Y'all getting this? Amen. Prayer works. But you have to have a word foundation. You got to dwell in him. You got to remain in him. You got to stay joined to him. That's why when the devil came to Jesus, it is written, man don't live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm going to show you. Jesus, he said that at 30. What was he doing at, from age one all the way up to 30? He was studying, getting some word in him. That's why when he prayed, he said, Father, I always know that you hear me. See, a lot of us, we've been in church 30, 40, 50 years, and don't have no word. And I brag about how long, baby, you've been in church, you ain't been in God. If you've been in God, you're going to have some results. How many of y'all know it's different being in church and being in God? See, that's what Jesus did. At 12 years old in the book of Luke, chapter number 2, he said, why are you looking for me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? 
At 12 years old, the Bible said he was in there listening to the teachers and asking them questions. And then don't show up. Then he, at 30 years old, he show up with his men. What is he doing? Reading, studying, meditating. And then when he walked out, he started calling out demons. The blind was able to see. The mute was able to speak. The deaf was able to hear, raising the dead. Why? He got some word in him. A lot of us, Christina, we ain't got no word in us. You got to get to, that's why he told Timothy. Uh, uh, he told uh, Timothy, and God told, what's the first thing God told Joshua? Joshua chapter number one, verse eight and number eight. He said, Joshua, don't let this book depart from you. But Joshua, he said, be careful to do according to all that is written there. Joshua, meditate in it. How often, Sean? Day and night. How often? Day and night. How often? He said, meditate in this word, day and night. Then after you meditate and do it, then you going to make your way prosper. You going to have good success because you got the word in you now. See, that's why John would tell the son, don't you move because we want the victory today. Then he come right back in Psalms chapter number one. Bless the man that walked not in the council of God, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the word of God. And in the word of God, he meditates day and night. In the word of God, he meditates Day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the roots of water that bring forth fruit in its season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Why? He got the word in it. We're praying without word. You know why? Because we don't have no word when persecution, with tribulation, the cows of this world, the deceit and the riches, we don't stand. We stumble, we fall away, and say, this stuff don't work. Look at your name and say, it works. See, and we said don't work. Yeah, it works, baby. But we don't have no, no word. We don't have no word. We don't have no word. It works. You got to get the word because the devil coming to take it from you. He going to make sure all hell breaks out. That's why Paul told us in, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 13, having done all to stand, stand. Amen. Having done all to stand, stand. But before then, he said, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heaven and place, because he's coming against your prayer life. He's coming against your word. He's coming to, to take your faith. Your faith is what's going to make your prayer life effective. Because without faith, you can't please him. Everything in the kingdom operates by faith. <sighs> Y'all all right? <laughs> Luke chapter number 8. Verse number 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So when you pray, you pray in what? Seed. You pray in the word. See, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. He take it out of their what? Heart. Why? Because they, remember, I, we just, I read all that for this reason. Let me say a good clarity. The reason he take it, because they don't understand it. See, he can't take it if you understand it. Devil, you better get back off of me. See, that's the reason he take it, because he said, you know, that's why Pastor read Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 13, I, wrote, I read Mark chapter 4, and now I'm reading Luke chapter number 8, because I want for you to understand it. Anything you understand, they can't take from you. See, he come and take it because you don't understand. When you understand it, you say, this is supposed to happen. This is part of the process. If you're pregnant and you two months pregnant, three months, and your face starts breaking out and your feet start swelling and you go to the doctor and he tells you, the doctor, take this away. He said, I can't take this away without taking the babe out of you. It's part of the process. If your appetite is changing, your skin breaking out, you irritable, baby, you're pregnant. You got some, you got some inside you pulling on you. You feed. You need to know this is part of the process. Stay the process for the whole nine months. It's going to be worth it. Amen. Watch this here, family. Those by the wayside, the one who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts because they don't understand it, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock, the stony ground, are the ones when they hear, receive the word with joy. They have no root who believe for a while in time of temptation, in time of testing, trial, they fall away. Now the ones that fell on the thorns are the ones when they hear, 
they go out and are choked. Why? Because the care, the riches, and the pleasure of life. They, they, they worldly minded. Most Christians are worldly minded. Because the care, the riches, the pleasure of this life, they bring no fruit to what? Maturity. They, bring, they don't let their prayer life go to maturity. Verse 15. This is my verse here. But the ones that fell on good ground are the ones who haven't heard. The word noble means honest. Uh, honest and a what kind of heart? A good heart. They keep it. And they bear fruit with, they really word endurance, perseverance. That's how you receive in your prayer life right here. I just gave y'all some powerful stuff. He said, those on good ground, they hear the word and having heard the word with an honest and good heart. They bring forth fruit. Watch this here. The good heart, they keep it. Keep it means they do it. They are doing not just to hear it. They do the word and they bring forth fruit with endurance, with perseverance. That's why he said, don't be weary and well doing. You're going to reap if you, if you faint not. That's why he said, don't cast away your confidence. For you have need of endurance, perseverance, steadfastness. After you're done the will of God, you're going to receive the promise. He ain't lying. But because we don't have no word in us. See, that's why our prayer is like, your prayer is like going to be affected to the word that you have in you. Because the devil going to come and try to get you off of your prayer life, your confession, what you believe in God for. But baby, if you stand, I'm telling you, it's going to come to pass. And God's going to take you from faith to faith and glory to glory. See, because when you pray, not only do you want to pray, but you want to pray correctly and you want to pray effectively. See, one of the things that I look at, where are we going, Holy Spirit? Uh, go, to, uh, go, to, <laughs> go to James chapter number 5. See? One thing, your man of God, I teach you God said, Terry, he taught him in stories. He said the, the, the secret, the nugget, the truth in the story. Go to James chapter number five. Watch this here. Y'all getting this? You have to. If you don't get it, you ain't, he going to steal it from you. See? He said good ground. See, you got three, you got four ground. In this church right now, you got four ground. Right sitting up. Somebody sitting here right now is wayside ground. Somebody sitting right next to you right now. Soon they hear the devil going to steal it from them because they don't understand. You sit next to somebody right now is stony ground. They receive the word with joy because they don't have no root. They're going to last for a while. You sitting beside thorny ground. Somebody right now, the cares of this world, the deceivingness of richness, the cares of others, it's going to choke the word out of them. But somebody sitting beside good ground people in here. They hear. They understand. They do it. And the Bible said with perseverance, with endurance, they're going to bring forth fruit with endurance. To, they're going to bring it to maturity. Watch this here, family. Where are the good ground people at? Let me see. Raise your hand. Where are the good ground people at? Who, who don't have their hand up? Okay. <laughs> Streaming live, I can't see your hand. You better have your hand up. Let me watch this here, family. Where are the good ground people at? Everybody raising their hand. I give you permission to move right now. We ain't got but two minutes left. Okay, put your hand down. Amen. She got both of her hands up. I know that's right. Amen, family. Good ground of people that hear, they, they receive it, they understand it, they do it, and they bring forth fruit with endurance. I don't, you, you know, hey, watch this here. I don't care how long it takes, Victor. I don't care how long it takes. I ain't moving until it show up. Do you hear what I just said, Carol? I, ain't, I don't care how long it takes. I ain't moving until it show up. It's on the way. Are y'all with me? Watch this here, family. James chapter number 5, verse number 17. If you're there, say amen. Are you there? Well, let's start at verse 13. Is there anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing some. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them Pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of what? The prayer of what? Let me tell you something. You got, the only way you're going to receive, you got to pray the prayer of faith. 
and I'm going to, one of the things I teach you the 10 things on how to pray correctly, I'm going to teach you the prayer of faith, what faith is. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. If you commit a sin, it will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Now, I just read you all those things about good ground, all the different things we just talked about today. That's the, fair, that's the effective prayer of a righteous person, somebody who's good ground. See? Let me tell you something, family. I found out. It took me a while, but I got it now. I don't want everybody praying for me. I see, I'm seeing how you Come act. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If, if truth be told, I can tell what you are right now. I can tell if I'm the pastor. I know my sheep. I know whether or not you wayside, stony ground, stony ground, or good ground. You can ask me. Well, don't ask me because I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> I know what you are. How you know? The Bible says you can tell a tree by the fruit. Your words and your action tell me what you are. And tell us, a man of God, the devil throwing everything he can at me. But I'm going to have done all the stand. I'm going to stand. This thing going to come to pass. I'm going to say, give me high five, you good ground here, you. But if you come to me talking about, Pastor, how much longer? I don't know how much longer I can take. How much? Man, get your wayside. You know I still got a curse word. I might, you know, I ain't going to curse. How I many of y'all know? They, it's still in there. But I push it down, it ain't going to come out. But now I know how to say it in godly terms. I know what you are. Watch here. Don't you know who your family, your people you connect with, don't you know who they are? Hey Amen. They talk all big and dress all good, but I know what you are. Your, your words tell me. Okay, okay, family. Can I go to one? I, I don't want to pick the scripture because I'm not going to finish. Let's go to one scripture, and we out of here. We're going to brunch. Go to Mark, no, uh, Matthew chapter number 26. Last scripture, we out of here. No, he said, Jesus said, you can tell a tree by the fruit that is best. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 26. Come on, family. I know what you are, and you know who I, what I am. Amen. Amen. Matthew what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to locate yourself. You want to move away from them other three grounds. You want to be good ground because that's the only somebody going to receive. You want to, every time you pray, you want them to line up and say, will you pray for me? Because they know your prayer is going to get answered. They know you ain't playing with this thing. They know you have relationship. You ain't just in church. Here you go, right here. Matthew chapter number 26, verse 7 to 3. Matthew 26, 7 to 3. When Peter denied Jesus, they, they bust him out. The little girl did. Y'all read it? Matthew 26, 73. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. For your speech, come on, finish it. Your speech betrays you. Your speech going to let me know whether you are good ground, wayside, stony, stony. Your speech betrays you. If I hang out with you and eat some tacos with you, Amen. Amen. Go do that old Charlie special, that prime real special with you. Your speech going to tell me what you are. Amen. I already know you know all the scripture. But I know ain't nothing going to happen in your life either. Not unless you good ground. Your speech going to tell me what you are. See, you can't say one thing and be another thing. The Bible says you're going to have what you say. Your speech. I'm going to close on that. Give the Lord a hand praise. Mm -hmm. Close on that. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is listen to you. How many of y'all know people talk big? And then they talk big, they action. See, your speech and your action. I can tell a tree by its fruit. You talk all good. Amen. I know when I told you I, when I was in the hood, I know who I want to fight with me. I know who I want to be in the foxhole with me. Some of them folks going, you know what I'm saying, you got to shoot them in the back. They're going to run off and leave you. <laughs> Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, streaming live, much love.
Hello, family. I'm Pastor Terry Stobbs of Fresh Start New Beginning Christian Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to Streaming Live. We're here every week at 10 a.m. Spread the word to your family and your friends. Now, family, listen to me. I just don't teach the word just to be teaching. I want for you to win in life. We serve a God that is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm going to tell you something that God shared with me many years ago I'd never forget. It comes from Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent. If God said it, he'll do it. If God promised it, he'll bring it to pass. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Now, I need your help. I want for you to sow into the ministry. I want for you to go to our website, which is fsnbcc.org, and click on to the donate button. Just click the button, or there's an address right below on the screen. Sow into the ministry. Fresh start, new beginning is good ground. Now, I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Whoever's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a fresh start, a new beginning. Have a great week. See you next week, same time.